we're making the Nova. The Nova is a really versatile pattern designed to be versatile so we can change out the different colors, really make it kind of work with whatever bait fish you have on your local waters. We're gonna start with the Gamakatsu SL12S size one, white thread. You can use any thread color that you need to. We're using some 210 flat wax. Pretty much what I always use. We'll start with the tail fibers. We're gonna use aquifer, white crap fur, pseudo hair, anything you have that you want to use. Works just as good. I like soft fibers with a lot of movement. I like a little clump here. All the under fiber out here. Keep my finger here, keep it from spinning around the hook. Pull it in position and post it. I'm gonna do three wraps just around the material itself. Just keep it upright. Keep fouling at a minimum. Take a we have an EP crafter brush. We're gonna add it here to the tail. Tie it in here in the bottom. We're gonna need about four wraps, maybe five wraps, based on how thick you want the tail. The tail right now is a little bit sparse, but that's okay. Wire. Lock it in. Nice straight forward tail. Lots of movement coming out of here. All right. Next material, we're using a EP Mino head brush in white. my thread forward out of the way. We're going to start building this head working forward. Just pull back on the fibers, make sure they just don't get trapped in there. You want to make this head bulky, but not in the way that where it's too dense, where you can't flatten it out with trimming. So I use about four to six wraps based on how much hook you have left and what kind of shape you're looking for. 
You want to give yourself a little bit of room on this fly because there's some head work to do at the end. And get that last one there. Okay. Fiber. Place. Trim it off, clean it up. I have to press down here to make sure the wire is not exposed. Trap it into the thread. Now this part here, we're going to pull all the fibers out. We want to really kind of pull them straight out from the hook, just from their natural angles, directly away from the hook. Kind of make them nice and puffy. This will allow you to kind of see where the fib fibers are naturally going to lay. What we're going to do is we're going to hold onto the tail fibers, pull them down out of the way. And we're going to run the scissors, not big and wide, not like this, but like in a nice smaller pattern. And the root. What we're going to do is we're going to carve a space to tie in a back color here. So I'm going to run them just like this. Be careful not to cut too deep for the tail. We're just going to kind of slide in there and remove some fibers. And you'll know if you did it right because it'll have a basically a nice open spot for you to tie the head material. So. Should look like that. We're gonna use a little pinch, a starburst. It's just a some long flash, just to add a little under color. Just don't need a whole lot. Just a couple wraps. And then our final material is whatever color you're going to add to the back of the, of the pattern. We're going to do olive because olive and white just seems like it can work anywhere. It's like a Menhaden, greeny, finger mullet. Kind of works. This one you want to be a little more sparse. It's just to make the back coloring and to finish out the head of the fly. Now that you have this huge hole here, it needs to be filled with this material. So you can base it on how much you cut away, but also how much color you want to add. You can add multiple colors if you want. You just don't want it to be too bulky. It's going to kind of look like so. You don't have to worry about the tail length too much because we're, we can trim that to fit. I just want to make sure it fits into that slot that we cut earlier nicely. And this one does. I'm going to hold it in place. You don't want to really bulk this up too much because you want a really nice clean head. So without letting the fibers spin around, we're going to go ahead and secure those in. Just a few really tight wraps here. I'm going to go ahead and trim off the tab. I'm going to get as flush as I can because again, you don't want to get too bulky and too messy here. I'm going to trim a little bit more off. And then we're going to clean this all up. Doesn't need to be completely perfect because we do have one major step with resin. This will get you to a point where this pattern is going to be nice and secure. Okay. We can put finish here.
Mm -hmm. We're gonna give her a little trim before we add the eyes. You can trim it after, but because I don't, I want to eliminate a lot of these longer fibers, I need to know what it looks like before we add any glue. So in order to do that, I'm gonna pull some of them out. Watch out for trimming the back and the tail, so I'll hold them together. I'm gonna usually go at like a 45 degree angle. So we'll add the taper to the head and eliminate some of that bulk that you built up with the minnow head. Just be very careful about cutting the wrong fibers here. Again, 45 degree. Go in there and just kind of taper the head fibers. Then we're going to do the belly the same way. 45. This also will simplify the last step when you're resining in the head. You'll have less fibers to fight with. Clean up this boxiness here on the belly. Bring a lighter, just kind of get it a little close to it. All right, we're gonna lay down some eyes on this bad boy. I get them close to the thread, but not on top of the thread, just touching right behind them. Press it down. You can get this pretty firm because we're gonna actually resin over them. I like to basically, for this pattern, get right on the edge of the thread. That's basically perfect right there. Press it down. Make sure it's nice and even with the hook shank. I'm gonna do the other side. Just need a little dab of glue. These are five millimeter pearl eyes. It's kind of my go-to lately. Same thing. And the reason why we're gonna put them so close to the front is because it's not the final head yet. Once it resins in, it will then encapsulate the whole area here. Now while those are drying, I'm actually going to put a little hot spot in. Even. We're gonna take a UV reactive marker. I'm gonna take red, I have neon pink here. Just going to hit the threads on the bottom. You can use orange or red. The threads absorb the marker and they're going to bleed a little bit. It's okay, just start small. I'm only going to go about halfway up. There we go. Okay. Now while the eyes are finishing drying, I'm gonna go ahead and clean up anything I see that's loose that might wanna to try to poke through the resin. So I'm just kinda gonna go in here and clean up. Just kinda of work a 45 degree angle around the bottom. Last thing you really want is resin stiffing fibers getting way of the hook point. So I'm gonna make sure to just cut them nice and short. There we go. Now I'm gonna go ahead and make sure these eyes are nice and dry. Press on them, see if I get any movement. Make sure all those fibers are gone.
I'm gonna do some little bit of resin work on these. I'm using solar res, medium viscosity, and you can use thin as a first. I recommend actually it makes it a little easier just to kind of lay down a base. But right now I'm just gonna use one for all. You're just gonna start by just trying to get it close to the threads and the first layer of materials and capture the corner of the eyes. This will be where you can just build from. You see, we got some like crazy hairs going on. It's okay. You just don't want the crazy hairs into the resin. But for now, this is perfect. I'm gonna kind of just fill it up. Okay, we're gonna give that a few spins. Make sure it just kind of evens out. Gonna flash it. You can see that pink really lighting up when the UV hits it. Okay. Now I'm gonna actually tilt it back just slightly for the last step. So make sure that the excess resin works backwards versus towards the hook point. So it's sitting on the fibers. These fibers are just getting I'm gonna do one last layer, this is gonna go over the eyes. You don't want this too bulky because it adds too much weight, but we're gonna go ahead and lay down that next layer behind the first layer you did on the threads. If you're having trouble encasing the eyes, just push down and push it to the back. Pull the resin backwards so it touches the fibers. Otherwise it can get too messy and too globby. Just kind of force it back there. If you don't spread it out, it just build and build and build, and then you have a big goop, and it becomes too much. And then from there, we we'll work back forward. We're gonna give her a spin, spinning to make sure it all evens out. Slow it down. I'm gonna flash it. No, though.